we're really moving along with our CRUD functionality. We're able to get a list of products. We're able to create an individual product, get a product by its ID. Now what we'll do is we'll update an individual product if it's in our store. And we'll be working inside of the admin section, products, and the edit. So we'll be working inside this component. So what we'll be doing is very similar to what we've been doing in the last several videos. We'll set up a bunch of actions. We'll create a brand new effect for updating an individual product. And also we'll update our store. Once we set up all these pieces, then we'll dispatch our action from the edit product component. If you've been following along in the last several videos, we're basically doing the exact same thing we did in the last several videos. If you go to the home page, and if you go down to module six, video 44, and then click on the snippets link, and you'll be able to copy all the snippets from this page into the project. Back inside of our products module, open up the action file, the effect, and the reducer. And we'll start inside the action file, and right below the section we were working in in the last couple of videos, the add individual product, we'll start right below the add products failure. So we want to leave that. Then we have a bunch of boilerplate here. This was automatically created for us when we generated this file. I'm just going to replace all of these actions with my own snippet. And then I'll leave the delete products. This will be for the next couple of videos when we set up a way to delete a product. So I'll leave the delete product actions. And then I'll replace this with another snippet. And this is going to be for updating an individual product. So the first action we're going to be dispatching from the product edit component. And when we update a product, we'll pass in the full product. Then after we update the product on the back end, we'll dispatch an action from the product effects. And we'll pass in the product updating the store. And of course, we'll handle any failures if there's any failures. So we have an action for that as well. So that's what you want your action file to look like. Now let's take care of our effects. And right below the create product section, we'll add in another snippet. And what we'll be doing is almost exactly like what we did here. So we pulled in our service here, the product service, and we're bringing that in. We'll need that to edit our product as well. And then also we're bringing in all of our actions as well. So we're importing all of our product actions from up here. So you want to make sure you're doing that. And then I'll paste in the snippet here. So we're listening for the upsert product we just set up and we're passing in the product with that action. So we'll update the back end and we're calling a method called edit product. And we pass in the product. Now this returns as a observable of product. So if we're successful at updating our product, we'll dispatch our second action we set up, passing in the product. And then if there's any problems, we'll take care of that with a failure as well. We'll be taking care of our other effects like alerts later on, but that's what you want your product effect file to look like. Next, let's move on to the reducer. And right below the add product failure action we set up in the last couple of videos, I'll paste another snippet. And the first one's going to be for our upsert product success. So if we successfully update our product, We'll update our store with a new product. And then the second one's going to be for the failure. So if there's any failures, we'll update our same error property with the error. You might be wondering what is the difference between the upsert one method and the update one? I know I was wondering that when I first seen this. The difference between the upsert one is this will add a new product to the store if the product is not already in the store. So the upsert one will find the product if it's in the store and update that product. But if it's not in the store, it will just go ahead and add a new product to the store. Now the update one will look for a product. If it finds it, it will update the product. But if the product is not already in the store, it won't bother adding a new one to the store. Now the reason I'm getting all these errors is because I removed the actions from the product action file. So let's go ahead and remove all of this boilerplate code. And I'll go all the way down to the delete product and just remove all of those actions. That was given to us when we generated the file. That was just some boilerplate code. And I'll leave the delete product. We'll be taking care of this in the next couple of videos. While we're here, let's do some refactoring. As you can see here, these failures, like the upsert product failure, the add product failure, and the load product failure, we're doing the exact same thing to the store. So we could clean this up a little bit. Let's go in and remove all of these failures. 
So start at the top and remove the load products failure. The load individual product failure, I'll get rid of this. And the add product failure, I'll remove this. And last but not least, remove this I just added in here. And then towards the bottom here, we'll take care of all those failures within one on method. And I'll add that here. So I created one on method and I just added in all those actions. I just stacked them within the on method. And then if any of these actions get called, we'll handle it the same way. And this is a real clean way of doing it instead of creating all those different on methods within your reducer file. So now that we set up all of our actions, our reducers, our effects, now we're ready to start dispatching our first action. We assembled all of our pieces. We created our effect, our action, we updated the store. Now we're ready to dispatch an action. We'll open up the edit component and we'll dispatch our first action from our edit component. Also, we'll go ahead and we'll take care of our side effects. Like for example, we'll give the user a alert message when they successfully update a product or if there's a failure. Back inside of our products module, we'll open up the product edit component and the TS file. And that's the only file we'll need to work in inside of that component. And then also while we're here, we'll open up our side effects for the rerouting the user and also giving the user alerts. So I'll open up our global alert effect file that handles giving the user alerts and then reroute the user. So we'll open up our global route effect file. And we'll start inside the product edit component. And the first thing we'll need to do here is import our actions from the product action file. And I'll add that at the top. So whenever we want access to our actions, we'll just call in the from product actions. Next, we'll need to set up our constructor and bring in the store. I'll add that towards the bottom of all of the services. And we'll make sure we bring in the store from NGRX and the app state. And now we're ready to start dispatching actions. So within the on submit, submit, this is what gets called when we submit the form. I'll comment all this out. We'll be getting rid of all this code in a second after we set up our side effects. But now we're ready to dispatch the action. So we'll call on the store we just set up and we'll dispatch an action and we'll call on the from product actions we just pulled in and the upsert product and pass in the product. And the information we're passing in is from this model. So the information from our form. And now we're ready to take care of our side effects. So what we want to do if they successfully update the product is just reroute them back to the product list page. We'll take care of that first. Let's go into the route effect file. And the first thing we want to do here is bring in our product actions. So I'll import that at the top up here. So whenever I want access to the product actions, we'll just call on this. And we're pulling that in from the modules and from the products module. And we'll pull in the action. And then down here, I'll paste another snippet. What we're doing is almost exactly like this. So I'll just paste another snippet right below here. And I called it go product list. And we're listening for the upsert product success. So if we successfully up update the product, send the user back to the list page. And that's all we need to do in this file. Moving on to our alerts. We're already bringing in our actions. So we already have that. So right below here, I'll paste another snippet. And I created two effects. One is when we're successful at updating the product, we'll give the user this alert message. The second one, if there's a failure, we'll give the user a danger message and let them know that we were unable to edit their product. And that's it for our side effects. So you want to make sure you add this snippet. And now we can clean up our product edit component. Let's jump back in there. And we could remove this now. And that really cleans up your components. Now all we have within this method is just this, and that's it. And then while we're here, we can remove the services we don't need anymore, like the alert service. We get rid of that. And also, we don't need to reroute the user anymore. And I'll rem remove it from the imports as well. And that's it for the product edit component. Now we're ready for testing. Let's check this out in the browser, make sure we're, that we're still able to update our products. 
let's see if we're still able to update our product. So we'll update the awesome product here. So I'll click edit and then we'll open up the debugger so we can see our actions being dispatched. Clear everything out. And then we'll update the product. I'll just uh, remove a couple from the quantity, edit product. And we're seeing our action being dispatched right here, the upsert product. We pass in the payload of the product. And then we successfully updated the product. And we also pass in the payload of product. If we look at our current state inside the products, entities, and we find the product we updated, I think it's this one here, it should be eight. And also we could tell by checking the difference from the last state to the current state. And the only thing we changed was the quantity to eight. So it shows up here. Also, you'll notice our side effects are working as well. If we do that again, and I'll just come back in here, add another one to it. As you can see, our alert is working on the side and we're being rerouted back to the product list page. So our side effects are working great. Now that we're able to update a product, let's set up a way where we could start deleting products and we'll do that next.